Let's talk about BronyCon. It was awesome. To explain this, I feel like I need to start at the very beginning of the very first day. From the moment we were in line to get our badges, I felt really safe and comfortable. I didn't have to worry about any kind of harassment or judgment. And everyone around us was really just there to have fun. Did somebody say fun? Where? Fun, 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 fun. When we got our badges, we got three color communication cards. These indicate how comfortable you are with strangers talking to you. The red badge means please don't talk to me. The yellow badge means I will be talking to people that I know already. And the green badge means that anyone can come up and talk to you. I really think this system is awesome, especially when you think about anyone who's on the autism spectrum or really incredibly introverted. It's a really polite way just to signal how comfortable you are with people talking to you. I kind of wish I had these in real life. The entire con really just felt welcoming, tolerant, open, safe, and of course, fun. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, before I go any further, I want to address the elephant in the room for any of you that are watching who are not bronies. I want to talk about the sexualization of My Little Pony. I need you to listen carefully. Are you listening? Really listening? In no way is that a part of BronyCon. Period. Okay, back to the actual things at BronyCon. There was some amazing cosplay. There were lots of ponies. My favorites of which being a couple dressed as Mr. and Mrs. Cake and a picture-perfect Coco Pommel. There were also some fantastic gender bend costumes and plenty of pony mashup costumes, which included a Harley Quinn and a Deadpool who were cosplaying as a Pinkie Pie and a cheese sandwich, complete with chicken and accordion. Because you all know that Deadpool's a brony, right? That's completely canon. And of course, there were cosplays of non-pony characters. Like this Boba Fett cosplay, who was searching for a Pinkie Pie bounty, and he chased one of them around the convention center, and it was hysterical. There was a good amount of merch in the dealer's room. There were a lot of prints and a lot of handmade stuffed animals but also a small handful of some really unique stuff. There was one jewelry booth that made the most perfect elements of Harmony necklaces, and I just adored them. There were also a lot of really fantastic panels, including some panels that I thought were pretty unique, like some of the voice actors teaching yoga, or story time with another voice actor, which unfortunately was only for families and their kids, so I'm super jealous because I could not go. We ended up going to the featured voice actor panels, but next year I want to budget my time better and get to more of them. You want me to yell for you, don't you? <laughs> 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 wow. Okay, so if Bubba's not cute now, she might go, whoa. But if she fell off the building, like, which is weird because she'd be blind. <laughs> Next time, I also want to attend Brony Palooza. I'm not huge on dancing, but from the photos, it looks like a fantastic time. I can only think of two things that I would change about BronyCon. The first thing I would change is to have a viewing room where you could actually watch the cartoon. It would be really great to be able to watch the show with a bunch of people who also love the show. I have no idea if that's even possible given licensing and things like that, but it would be a really great addition in between like the midday lull. The other thing that I would change about BronyCon is how they do the Q&A sessions at the panels. The way it worked is they would announce that they were going to start opening up for questions and everybody would rush to the front and get in a line. And then everyone asked the same questions over and over and over again. Like I get it that everybody wants to talk to them and gush over them, but I feel like that's what the autograph signings are really for. Because it's real boring to watch the same questions over and over again. I wish there was a way to automate the process so that not only it would decrease the amount of repeat questions, but the actors and the panelists could actually choose which questions they would want to answer. I don't think this would be very hard to fix, 
you could just create a Twitter account specifically for the panels. Everyone could tweet their questions, and then whoever is moderating could actually just scan down the list of anyone that tweeted and pick the best questions. Maybe this kind of defeats the spirit of a convention and opening up for Q&As. Maybe I'm just a curmudgeon, but I feel like it'd be a little better. So that's it. That's my full report on BronyCon. I can't wait to go next year and hopefully step up my costume game for it. Although I do feel like the Paris sprites were a really big hit, I want to make something a little more complicated. If you want to see more photos from BronyCon, I've left a link to their Facebook in the description box below. All of the still images that you saw in this video actually came from their Facebook. And if you're interested in any of the cool merchandise that was in this video, I've linked those stores down below too. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so you know when I update, and I'll see you next time.